Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about how to do sortable drag and drop lists in your Rails application. Um, we've talked about this in the past back in the jQuery and CoffeeScript and other things days. Um, in this episode we're going to be specifically using Webpacker in Rails 6. So this will apply um, going forward in Rails and we're going to be using Stimulus.js to set up our components that are sortable. So um, we are gonna be using a library called Sortable.js. You could actually just build a stimulus controller that does the drag and drop if you'd like. But as you will probably find out, there are lots of little edge cases and details that you have to get just perfect um, in order to make this work cross browser uh, correctly and everything. So I've found it's easier just to grab a library like this, install it and use that in my Rails apps. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. So here I have a brand new Rails application and first things first, we're gonna to need to generate some sort of model for our to-dos, something that is sortable. So we're gonna say to-do, we'll have descriptions and we will have a position, which will be an integer. This position is gonna be important. That's going to be what saves the ordering server side so we can render them out in the correct order. And when you drag and drop, we'll make a request to Rails and update that record's uh, position. So that's pretty straightforward, but we're gonna to need to add acts as list to our gem file. This gem's going to handle the sorting for us, um, which will be really handy. And we can also tell it to insert our drag and dropped item into a specific location, which is going to help when um, we go and save that to the database and we need to reorder the entire list. This gem will take care of all of that for you. You can build it from scratch if you wanted to make your own concern, but it's simple enough and this gem has been around for a long time and works great. So we're gonna just use that. Um, to use this gem, we're gonna go to our to-do model here and we're gonna say it acts as list. So every time that a to-do is created, it will get its position set automatically for us and this adds some methods we can use. Um, to do our reordering. So one of the updates I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the table from our index action here, and I'm going to change the to-dos into their own um, items. Now, it doesn't matter what type of tags we have here. A lot of times you'll see unordered lists and list items um, in drag and drop examples. We're just gonna use uh, a nested div tag here, and that will be all that we really need. So if we were to do this and we say, you know, let's display the to-do, we don't need to display the position or anything. And potentially we could make that linkable as a description if we wanted to, but let's just leave that part out for now. So the way that we want to wrap the sortable JavaScript is by using a stimulus controller. So let's go ahead and run Rails webpacker colon install colon stimulus to enable stimulus JavaScript in our application. We need to do that in our drag and drop example here, of course. So we'll do that in our folder. And once that's done, we will have a controllers folder under app JavaScript and we'll have a hello controller. I'm gonna rename this one to drag controller and we'll say drag controller.js. And this is where we're gonna define our JavaScript for this. We're gonna, we are not going to need any um, targets for this. We're going to simply say data controller equals drag right here. And our connect event is where we're going to set up sortable JS. So we need to go to our terminal and run Rails add sortable JS. That's going to give us the sortable module that we can load up. So we'll say import sortable from sortable JS and the code that we need to do to set up is we're going to say this dot sortable equals um, sortable dot create this dot element. So you will always have access in stimulus to this dot element automatically that points to the element that the controller is mounted to. So you'll have a uh, reference to that and that is what we can pass in to sortable to tell it hey, we want everything under here to be sortable objects. So every element underneath that will be sortable automatically. So we could give these, say, a class of card, card body, maybe we want a little bit of bottom uh, margin, and we can add some um, 
callbacks in here for events. So on end is going to be the uh, basically the callback that will be called whenever the drag and drop is finished. So once you drop the item, that will call on end. There's other ones like on start if you want to do anything interactive in those situations. We just mostly care about persisting this stuff to the server. So we're just going to have on end. So I'm going to add a method called end here. And that will um, be what we call automatically. So if we bind this, that will keep the this keyword um, kept to our stimulus controller. So we'll have access to all of that still. Um, and then we can call this and say console.log event and just make sure that all of this is wired up correctly. So let's go to our browser. It will recompile our JavaScript changes and we'll see our to do's. So let's go add some new to do's. Say test one. Let's create another to do test two. You'll want to remove that position, but you can see that's automatically being set by axis list. And if we drag and drop these, it should be uh, moving these numbers around. And you can see there when I hover over the other one, it replaces those and it swaps them. So it's sorting um, by where we drop that in. And let's go ahead and do a third test maybe even a fourth and a fifth, just so we can have some more data to work with and you can see how this works. So really we want to be able to drop this and then that will be persisted server side so we can refresh this page and it will be in that same position. So if we open up our console, we should see that that event is being printed out here. And if we open this up, we'll see all the details of that event. So notably, we have this new index, which is the location you drag and drop that item into. That's going to be important for us to go tell the server, hey, we want to put this in position, whatever, that index probably plus one, um, so that we don't have them, the, the positions by axis list start at one, and they're not zero based. So that's an important thing to know. Then um, we also want to keep track of the item itself that we dragged. So we have event.item. We'll need to uh, basically grab the ID from that so that we can pass that over um, to Rails. So inside of here, effectively, what we want to do is make a Rails.ajax request to the Rails server for some URL that we have here. And we want our type to be like a patch request, and we're gonna have some data that we'll pass over. So our data, we can easily set up as a new form data object. And here we want to say data append position is event.newIndex plus one. And remember that plus one is important because these indexes are zero based, but access list is uh, not. So we need a URL for Rails to post to. So we can do that pretty easily by saying data drag URL equals slash to do slash colon ID slash move. So that's a route we're gonna need to add to our routes file. In our to do's, we can say resources do, member do, and we will have a patch request for move. So that's gonna generate the exact same route as we have here. Um, we will replace that ID colon ID with the ID of the to do in here. So we will say data ID equals to do dot ID. And whoops, in our HTML. And then we can retrieve that ID from the event. So we'll say event dot, um, what was it called? Item. So when we drag and drop item number two, we should see that event.item is that test two. So event.item.dataset.id will retrieve the data ID from that. Then we can go and say here, this.data.get URL, which is the stimulus helper to get data drag URL. And we can replace the colon ID with our ID. So that's going to set up everything we need to make our Ajax request 
So let's go ahead and um, move over to our to-dos controller. We're gonna need to add a new item here called move and our new action. So we'll add the set to do um, move to that so that it will be set for us. So we'll already have access to do and we can say insert at, which is one of the methods from access list. We'll take that to do item that we found out of the database and then we'll say params position. And actually this should be a uh, position as a name of a string and then the value. That will give us that string and then position will convert to an integer and we will update that. And we can just say head okay if that is successful. So now we can go refresh our browser and we can try all of this out and see if that works. So we'll open up our uh, console here, see that there are no errors. We should, if we open up the Rails logs, see a patch request to to do slash for slash move. So it's grabbing the URL, it's replacing that with the ID, then it's making the Ajax request all in the browser, and then that's being sent to Rails. We get the position, we look up the to do right here. And then we go and update the position and it will go ahead and update all the rest of those positions uh, accordingly as well. So that is updating our to-dos, but we do need to go into to-dos index once more and change the sort order here. So to-dos index is going to be ordered by um, the position ascending. So from one starting and going up from there, so ascending. So with that change, we can refresh our page and we'll see that now we can drag five to the second place, refresh our page, and it is persisted. So that's all there is to it. That is all you need to build sortable lists in Rails. It's super duper simple, the persisting using the JavaScript, also very simple, and we'll be talking about how to build a Trello board-like thing in a future episode um, using their nested sortables. So for example, here you can move things around inside and outside and so on um, in your uh, sortables here. So that allows you to build multiple lists and then drag and drop things across them and so on. So there's all kinds of different things you can do to set up your UI. Um, this is a great uh, library for doing some of those things. So that is it for this episode, and we'll talk to you in the future when we get to that episode. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. Peace!